Hey, what's up, everybody? Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you today. Sorry, my voice is hoarse. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but the show must go on. The show must go on. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, you know, kids, stuff, stuff happens. It's wintertime, uh, COVID, although I tested negative. So there's that. But uh, the voice is not there, but we're going to do this anyway. So i uh, excited to be with you today. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're feeling better than I am, but uh, it's going to be good stuff. So here we are sitting in 2022, looking forward to helping people pass their FE and PE exams. And today I want to talk about specifically about the FE exam, which is a question I get all the time. And that is how hard is the civil FE exam? Many people ask that question. So I'm going to talk about why it's hard and what we can do to make it less difficult for yourself. So uh, that's what we wanted to hit today. It's going to be a fun episode and I'm excited to share it with you. It's going to be coming up right after this. All right, so the FE exam is a big deal. Um, there's no question about that. Many people are required to take this exam while they're in college. And uh, when I went to school, it was required to even graduate college. Now that's an ABET accredited school. I There are some schools I hear that don't require it to graduate, but for the most part, you have to pass this exam to graduate. Um, and if you find yourself that you're out of school, it just kind of gets even more difficult um, because <clears throat> you kind of lose those subjects that you have in your head um, as you went through school. So many people report this is probably the most difficult exam to take. And so uh, they, they, you know, it, it causes some worry, a little bit of fear going on there. So we don't want to feel that way. But these are the reasons why I think the FE exam is particularly hard. And the first reason why it's difficult is because they test you on a wide variety of topics. Um, you have 14 different topics uh, that follow the NCE NCES specifications. And that that's a challenge for people because you gotta go way back into the vault and figure out some of the things uh, that you may have forgotten uh, if you're taking that, if you're taking this exam later, and the topics range uh, are on a wide variety of things, including mathematics, very heavy on mathematics, uh, statics, ethics, economics, dynamics, mechanics of materials, fluid mechanics, materials, surveying, water resources and environmental, geotech, transportation, and finally construction engineering. So that's a huge <clears throat> variety of topics. Now the PE exams, you know, at least the second half is a little more geared specifically to a specific discipline. But the FE, you've got to know a wide range of, of topics. And uh, with, with the heaviest ones typically being like mathematics and statics uh, and economics, things of that nature. So <clears throat> this is a reason why the exam is difficult. It's a broad range of topics um, that they test you on. You have to go back to kind of your college days to kind of figure those things out. And so that that does make it difficult, but um, I'm curious your thoughts, but usually that is a top reason why people find this exam very difficult. It's a lot of topics and it's a lot of material that they could test you on. And so it can cause some fear and anxiety to take the exam because of that. The second reason I can think why this exam is very hard is because you have to realize how much time you're going to have to dedicate to studying for this thing. So the truth is that you have to treat this almost like your new part-time job. Um, ideally, you're taking this while you're in school and so you don't have to brush up on topics as much. But the truth is, is many people, if they don't pass it while they're in college, wait until after college or well out of college to take the exam. And if you're in that, that boat, um, you end up you know, forgetting things much quicker. So ideally, you're taking it while you're in school, which require less study time <clears throat> on the whole. But if you're taking it after school, um, you're going to have to put in a little more time to re refresh and remember the topics that you've got going on in your head and what you need to study. So um, ideally, if you can give yourself three to four months of study prep, that would be ideal. Um, if you're in school and you can knock this thing out very rapidly by preparing for a month or two, great. If you're out of school, um, it's going to take a little more startup time and a little more prep to help you get to where, where you need to be. So my recommendation on that is about um, 
you know, two hours a day, probably six to eight on the weekends to really nail this thing so you can really understand the concepts on this. And so um, that's another reason why the exam can be very hard is because you have to dedicate so much time to studying and, and preparing for this. It's your new part time job, basically, is what it is. So that's another reason why. Another reason why this exam is is very difficult is because people um, there's a fear of failure, right? Like everyone feel, uh, feels this fear of failing the exam. You're checking out the pa pass rates. Uh, maybe you have failed before and that might um, maybe you're just freaked out about taking this exam again because you don't want to deal with it anymore. And some people go through that. Um, the problem is, is if you let that fear control you and taking this exam or you bombed it the first time, um, you know, you're really going to get stuck on your progress in your career. So let's not let the fear of failure control you. Um, use that fear and let's realign it into studying and what you need to do to, to get over this. Now, if you go look at the pass rates um, with the CBT exam, their latest data shows that you're typically passing your first time around 70%, which is actually really good. Um, you know, the PE exam can can drop as low as in the 50s for first time takers, but typically it's around 65 to 70%. So based on the data that they've gathered, they've got about a 70% pass rate right now for those taking the civil FE exam. And I think that's pretty good. Like you got a pretty good chance of passing that exam the first time you take it. So don't let that fear of fail uh, failure uh, stop you from taking this exam. And if you do fail the exam that first time, don't let repeat pass rates get you down either. Just simply get back um, into the study mode, get back to taking that exam again and you can overcome that fear of failure. So that's another reason why this exam can be hard for people. Um, another reason why the exam is hard is because you really have to get to know the FE handbook very well, which coincides with practicing problems. So, um, you know, the FE handbook is a necessary evil. A lot of people uh, don't love that book. The variables are different. Uh, than, than what you might see in a textbook. And sometimes the variables are different between equations that might be the same. Like they just, uh, it's, it's a little bit frustrating. It's updated frequently. And um, it, just, it just doesn't ooze user friendliness very much. So you, you get used to the way that, that the NCES portrays graphs and figures and you get used to that, but it does take some time in figuring it out. Um, which can cause some fear and make this exam hard. It does kind of suck, but you know, you got to practice problems. And in conjunction with that, you got to use the FE handbook. That's just the real key to passing this um, and really kind of what makes this exam hard. So um, get used to using the handbook, get used to the equations and the variables and the tables, uh, know what they call out in there, and you'll be way ahead of the game. <coughs> Sorry, had a bit of a coughing fit going on there, but we got it sorted out, I think. So, uh, yeah, the you know, getting to know the FE handbook and, and practicing a lot of problems uh, can make this exam hard. But, you know, it is an exam and those are the things you have to do. Um, and you need to become very familiar with that FE handbook in terms also of knowing how to use it as a PDF, know how to use the search function know what's not in there, know what is in there, um, know how when you're using the search function uh, to really use that thing. So it brings up uh, all the options that you that it can search for you, which is kind of nice, right? Taking a, a computer based exam is nice because you get that feature. So that's kind of nice. When I took the FE exam back in the day, it was paper based and they gave you a nice green covered FE um, review manual, which was your only a weapon at your disposal and you just had to thumb through that thing. So <clears throat> you guys are lucky that you can search that the new uh, PDF in on a computer really easily. So that's very, very nice. All right. Another thing that makes this exam hard is time management. Now you have five hours and 20 minutes to nail 110 questions. It's quite a few questions and not a lot of time. Um, many people if you're, if you're guessing a lot on problems, you've got a real problem and we need to make sure you're not guessing on problems. Um, 
and or not totally guessing on a ton of problems. Uh, I have no problem going through the exam and flagging problems that are difficult to come back to, making sure you're blowing through the most easy questions uh, asked first. That's really what you should do. But the real key, if I can talk, the real key to passing the uh, exam and, and understanding your time management is by taking practice exams and putting, putting yourself in a pressure cooker well before the real exam. So if you get the chance to take practice exams, which is definitely something you should do, definitely recommend that, at least one. Uh, make sure you are putting pressure on yourself in a timed scenario. You know, they say the exam six hours, but um, after all your material you go through to sign your life away, you have five hours and 20 minutes to really take the exam. But put yourself in an environment where you're timing yourself taking a practice exam so that you can go through it and make sure that um, you can get through an exam in the right amount of time. So when the exam time comes, you're going to feel better prepared for that. So time management can be a huge deal for people. Some people just hate taking tests or they suck at taking tests or whatever the environment might be there. You know, those things are common and that's OK. And the way to combat that again is by taking timed practice exams. I remember when I was taking the PE, you know, I didn't want to do that. I hated that idea, but I can tell you there's nothing better for you to understand where you're at and how to manage your time than really um, timing yourself taking a practice exam. So uh, those are the fears that people have. Those are the things that I think that make the FE exam particularly hard. Uh, the subject matter definitely at the number one because those revert back to almost college uh, level courses where you got to re really dive into the math stuff and statics. Um, the PE is is very different in, in that uh, it's less math heavy for sure. And so, um, but those are my my top things of reasons why I think the FE is particularly hard. And now I want to share with you some suggestions. I'm not going to dive into a ton of these, but some suggestions to overcome those fears or the things I think that make this exam hard. Um, so we know why the, F, uh, the FE exam is hard. So I want to talk about a few tips so we can ease the pain of that. So some keys to passing I've already mentioned. Um, one of those keys, though, is to really understand the concepts of the problems. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of the test is based on the theory and conceptual type problems that come up. And these might look easy to solve when you first get them because they're just word problems. But if you haven't put in the work to really understand an equation or understand the concept of the problem, you're just going to miss out on those or you're going to take too much time thinking about them to really get an answer on them. So to really combat that, you need to understand why particular equations are being used, um, why variables are used, what happens if you change a numerator or, de or denominator value, what happens to this, does it increase or decrease? Uh, really try to understand the concept and the, the equations that they're pulling from. And if you can do that, it's going to help you all the better on your P or on your FE exam because, it, and the same with the PE exam, but it's going to help you understand those conceptual theory questions, which are very frequent. They've included more and more every year. So just be aware of that. I have already mentioned practice exams. I recommend definitely do one at least. Uh, if you can do two, then even better. Put pressure on yourself well before the exam. That will help you with a, a lot of things, knowing how where you're at, how you're doing. It'll help you with time management because some people hate taking tests or they just stink at it, and it's going to help with that. Um, the other thing is like worrying about, not worrying about it, but taking care of yourself. Like make sure you're eating well, like don't go into the exam starving. Make sure you've properly prepared your body and your mind for this exam. Get a well, you know, get a good night's rest, which I haven't had for a while. I've got four kids. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Just kidding. Um, <clears throat> you know, try not to be sick like me right now, but eat healthy food, get, get a good night's rest before the exam and try to take care of your body. Um, you know, I, one of our um, affiliates is actually Built Bar. If you go check out the macros on those, they're awesome. So go check them out too. They have really good snacks. It's like a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It's awesome. You go to civilengineeringacademy.com slash built. Go use our code CIVAC and you can get 10% off um, anything you order there. 
Um, I particularly love the coconut stuff. I know there's not coconut. Not everyone's a coconut fan, but I can tell you these things are good. And uh, if you're going to bring a snack to the exam, I definitely recommend it. But give yourself some healthy food. Um, you know, that's the whole point of this. Make sure you give yourself plenty of rest before you go take the exam. Um, schedule, you know, make sure you've planned a schedule and schedule your plan. What do I mean by this? Another tip that I have for you in preparing for this is make sure that you, when you get the NCES specifications that you nail down a schedule for yourself to study. Um, make sure you understand what times you can actually study in your, in your life, in your week. And you need to block that out. You need to make sure your family, friends, loved ones are all on board with that because you're probably not going to be able to attend all the functions that you've ever wanted to anymore. Uh, you know, you got to dedicate three months to this thing or whatever time you, you feel that you could act adequately prepare for this. But you need to get them on board and make sure they understand that you can't do everything or plan accordingly. And if you're doing family vacations or whatnot, make sure you're giving yourself you know, additional time to prepare if you know that kind of stuff is coming up. So make sure <clears throat> that you've scheduled that, that you get a study plan together, you know, knock out the specification, take a specific topic, make sure you hit that during a specific week and just build a schedule around that and make sure um, you've timed and you've blocked time off for you to study, whether that's at work or at home or wherever it can be, make sure you're doing that. All right, everyone, I hope those tips were, you know, they were quick tips, but I hope those tips helped you to understand why the FE exam is hard and also some of the tips to help you overcome those fear of, uh, of taking this exam. The FE is the very first step to becoming a PE, and it's going to launch your career into places that you never imagined. So you got to get the FE first, get that thing knocked out, and then we can work towards the PE as well. Uh, but the FE is definitely a difficult exam. Like I said, many people said that it's the hardest exam that they've ever taken. Um, I can tell you that you can get through it. It, um, you know, it might be a, a difficult exam, but as you prepare for it, it will become easy for you. So, uh, you know, if you need resources, um, which are definitely another reason why we can make this exam much easier, go check out the resources we've made. We developed an entire course to help people. It's the ultimate civil FE review course. You can go check it out at civilfereviewcourse.com. It includes lectures that follow the specifications to a T. It includes tons of practice problems. I think we've got over 300 plus problems. It's got two practice exams plus an exam simulator. And you've get, you're getting amazing support from the CEA team. We are here to help you at every step of this journey. And it's a safe space for you to come in and you know complain, talk about a failure if you've had them celebrate the wins that you have and post and ask, ask questions that you've got. So that's all built to help you go check it out at civilfereviewcourse.com. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm excited about your journey in 2022. Can't wait till you pass this exam. Shoot me an email if you have any questions or comments and definitely leave them below. If you have any other comments or tips for others that are taking uh, this exam in 2022, would love to hear them. So hope you're doing well and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.